James Carville, a political consultant and commentator, joins Bill Maher for a conversation about politics and the current state of affairs in the United States. Carville begins by discussing the importance of making enemies in politics rather than friends, highlighting the need to challenge opposing viewpoints. He describes himself as an independent voter who has voted for every Democratic president but has also given Republicans a chance. Carville describes the podcast as Club Random because it covers various topics that don't fit neatly into one category. He mentions that the podcast's decor is thrown together and lacks a woman's touch, jokingly referring to himself as a statistical freak for getting married at 49 and being married for 30 years. Carville and Mark discuss their views on marriage and relationships. Carville acknowledges that he may complain about his marriage but believes that he and his wife have a real and lasting relationship. They discuss the perception of their marriage as a cross-political divide marriage and address the rumors that it is an arranged or fake marriage. Carville emphasizes that their marriage is genuine and that he truly loves his wife, despite his reputation as a hard dog to keep on the porch. The conversation then turns to the current political landscape and the Democratic Party. Carville praises the talent within the Democratic Party, mentioning politicians like Josh Shapiro, Wes Moore, and Andy Bashir. He believes that the party needs to showcase this talent and present a strong, united front. Carville suggests that the Democrats should remember the importance of appealing to voters in states like Kentucky, where they have historically struggled. Marr and Carville discuss the possibility of a new constitutional convention and the need for change in the country. They mention the issue of equal representation in the Senate and the need to address the power imbalances between states. Carville expresses frustration with the current political system and the lack of progress. The conversation then shifts to Donald Trump and his presidency. Carville describes Trump as both stupid and crazy, highlighting his lack of strategy and his tendency to say and do outrageous things. They discuss Trump's ability to own his behavior and appeal to his base, even when he engages in controversial actions. Carville acknowledges that Trump's appeal lies in his ability to validate his supporters' feelings and frustrations. Carville and Marr discuss the perception of Trump's supporters and the divide between coastal elites and the rest of the country. They acknowledge the arrogance and preachiness of some liberals and the need for more open dialogue and understanding. Carville emphasizes the importance of accepting and being comfortable with differing viewpoints in relationships and politics. The conversation continues with a discussion of the Russian interference in the 2016 election and the possibility of compromising information on Trump. Carville believes that there was some level of collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign, citing the sharing of campaign information with a Russian agent. He also mentions Trump's public statements inviting Russia to interfere in the election. However, he acknowledges that the full extent of the relationship may never be known. Carville continues by expressing his concerns about President Trump's chances of winning re-election. He acknowledges that Trump has had some successes, such as handling the economy and foreign affairs, but believes that his performance in the debates and his overall image will ultimately lead to his defeat. Carville compares Trump to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, suggesting that he will become a symbol of the past rather than a successful president. Carville also discusses the influence of identity politics within the Democratic Party. He argues that while the party is largely in agreement on many issues, a small but vocal group of progressive liberals often dominate the conversation. He refers to them as the identity left and describes them as annoying and silly but not evil. Carville believes that this group has a disproportionate impact on the party and that their focus on identity issues can be detrimental to the party's success. The conversation then turns to the state of education in the United States. Carville expresses his frustration with the lack of knowledge and critical thinking skills among young people. He cites examples of people being unable to answer basic questions about history and current events. Carville attributes this to a decline in the educational system and the influence of identity politics within academia. 
He argues that the focus on identity issues has overshadowed the importance of teaching critical thinking and a broad understanding of the world. Marr and Carville also discuss the upcoming presidential election and the potential candidates. They mention the possibility of Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, running for president. Carville believes that Newsom would be a strong candidate due to his communication skills and charisma. They also discuss the importance of having a diverse ticket and the challenges of navigating identity politics within the party. The conversation continues with a discussion about the current political climate and the need for a more pragmatic approach to politics. Carville argues that the Democratic Party needs to focus on winning elections rather than ideological purity. He believes that the party should be more willing to compromise and appeal to a broader range of voters. Carville also emphasizes the importance of effective communication and messaging in politics. Carville starts by discussing the pandemic and how it has been mishandled by the current administration. He mentions that while the front-page news often focuses on the negative aspects, buried within the stories are some positive aspects, such as Florida's death rate being better than the national average. Carville recalls being in Florida during the pandemic and feeling that it was not as oppressive as it is in other places. The conversation then shifts to the upcoming presidential election, with Carville expressing his belief that President Trump will not be re-elected. He mentions being shocked by Trump's performance in the debates and compares him to Scott Walker, a former governor who was more personable. Carville also talks about Susie Wiles, a Republican operative who worked with Governor DeSantis and played a significant role in his political career. He mentions that she is now working with Trump and is responsible for some of the negative stories circulating about DeSantis, such as him eating pudding with his fingers and using private airplanes. Carville then discusses the nature of American politics and the importance of making friends and avoiding unnecessary enemies. He emphasizes that in politics, enemies can be detrimental and advises against making enemies of choice. He also mentions the intense rivalry between Republicans and Democrats, noting that they do not hold back when attacking each other. Bill Maher asks Carville if he misses being in the political trenches, to which Carville responds positively. He expresses his love for working in campaigns and the high he gets from it. Carville mentions that he has worked in 22 different countries and enjoys the smell of a campaign headquarters. He also mentions his fondness for politicians and how they are often misunderstood by the general public. He believes that politics is fascinating and wishes more people would follow it closely. The conversation concludes with both Marr and Carville expressing their love for politics and their frustration with people who do not follow it. They believe that politics is an important aspect of society and that being informed and engaged is crucial for being a good voter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe.